Good evening, I'm David Kramer with Alaska Weather. As always, please visit our website, weather.gov slash Alaska, get any updates to the forecast, who that means, or check out any watches, warnings, or advisories that we might have out for your area. You can also call our weather info line, 1-800-472-0391, get any updates to the forecast, who that means, as well. And you can email me at the address at the bottom of the screen, david.kramer at noaa.gov. Starting off, I want to point out that we did break a snowfall record for Fairbanks yesterday on February 16th. That was a single day record of 4.1 inches. The old record was 3.9, set in 1932. Taking a look now at the warnings, watches, and advisories that we have out for the state. Fair number out today will start off in the Panhandle area, specifically down in the Prince of Wales Island area, Southern Inner Waters. We do have two high wind warnings out for those locations. Both of them are gonna start later tonight at 3 a.m. Thursday, and then go until noon on Thursday. Again, high wind warning out for Prince of Wales Island, the bulk of it, the southern portions, and for the Southern Inner Channels to include Ketchikan. As we move up towards the Sitka area, we have a high wind watch in effect for the Sitka area. This is going to be in effect from Thursday at 6 a.m. until Thursday at 3 p.m. As we move up even more into the northeastern portions of the Gulf Coast to include the Yakutat area, we have the winter storm warning that has been out. That's going to be out until 6 p.m. this evening, so it should be tapering down pretty soon here. And the storm total snow for that system should be between 4 to 7 inches. As we move up into the eastern portions of the Alaska Range, we do have a, a winter weather advisory out for snowfall there. And then we also have, as we move out towards the Kuskokwim Delta area, winter weather advisory out for blowing snow. And that's gonna be in effect until uh, 9 p.m. this evening. Again, that could drop conditions with that blowing snow down to one half mile or less for visibilities at times. As we move up along the Arctic coastline, wind chills all along the coast, starting with the western ones where we have the wind chill advisories out. These are going to be in effect from midnight tonight until noon on Thursday, and wind chills could get to 55 below. As we look at the more eastern ones where we have the wind chill warnings out, those ones are going to be out until noon on Friday, so lasting a day longer than the western locations, and the wind chills could drop down to as low as 65 below. If you're in any of these locations or anywhere else where you want a detailed forecast, you can always visit our website, weather.gov slash Alaska, and click on your area or type in your city, and then you can figure out the most detailed and up-to-date information for your site. So look at our satellite imagery now. We have multiple lows moving through the system, two weaker lows on either side of the Alaska Peninsula, bringing in some precipitation to the area, but starting to uh, fizzle out with those lows. As we move further to the east into the Gulf of Alaska, we can see that system coming up from the south, pretty strong, very deep low, bringing cloud cover out through much of the Gulf of Alaska area and out over the Panhandle as well. As we look way out to the west, we can see some cloud cover coming in ahead of another system that will be approaching the western Aleutian Islands that we'll talk a little bit about later. Then out over mainland Alaska, we have some of the cloud cover, especially over the southern portions of the mainland, where we're still seeing quite a bit of snow for those locations. Our weather for the remainder of the day will start off with the system coming up towards the Gulf of Alaska area. It's a deeper system right now at 972 millibars, bringing up some warmer air with it where we're seeing a lot of rain throughout much of the Gulf. And in the central and northern locations of the Panhandle, we're starting to see that transition over to snow. We're going to see snow also for south central Alaska, extending down into southwest Alaska and up into the interior. Out by the Kuskokwim Delta area, we do have those blowing snow conditions in effect, as well as some blowing snow out by the St. Lawrence Island island area from the winds picking up the loose snow on the ground. Up along the Arctic coastline from Ukiagvik and areas farther to the east, we're expecting to see more fog. And then down in the Bering Sea, primarily snow until we get to some of the Aleutians, where some warmer air, especially by the eastern Aleutian Islands, will mix that rain or mix the snow with rain. 
As we look into tonight, we can see the second system coming up towards the western Aleutian Islands, bringing another push of warm air with it, transitioning some of the snow to rain for the western Aleutians. However, much of the rest of the Bering Sea is expected to stay in snow, and that snow with the northerly winds going to push down into the eastern Aleutians as well as the Alaska Peninsula. Snow extending out over southwest Alaska, Kodiak Island, south central Alaska, and into the interior, especially those eastern parts of the interior. Up along the Arctic coastline, we still have some areas of fog, but now we're starting to see some snow mix in for those western locations. And then down by the St. Lawrence Island area, Bering Strait, we are going to see some more blowing snow conditions for tonight. Finally, down in the Panhandle area, our stronger low moving closer towards the eastern portions of the Gulf of Alaska, bringing in some stronger winds to the area, as well as a mix of rain and snow for those southern locations, starting to become more snow as we move further inland and up for farther to the north. On Thursday, that low is going to be out over the eastern portions of the Gulf of Alaska, continuing to bring some stronger winds and some precipitation to much of the Panhandle area. Again, rain in southern locations, more snow as you get farther to the north and higher elevations. Out over the mainland, southern mainland is going to see primarily snow, starting to get some mixture of rain and snow as you get by Prince William Sound area. We're also going to have snow extending up into the interior and down in the Bristol Bay area. Up along the Arctic coastline, still going to see snow out west with more fog as we get farther to the east. And then our front out over the western Aleutian Islands, pushing closer towards the central Aleutians, bringing a rain and snow mix to the islands with some snow out ahead of this system. Finally, on Friday, that low is going to move out by the eastern Aleutian Islands, or rather a new low is going to form off the old boundary that was with that front moving through the central Aleutians, and we're going to see a mix of rain and snow for the eastern Aleutian Islands with some snow out ahead of it for the Pribilof Islands as well as the Alaska Peninsula. High pressure starting to move in over mainland Alaska from the northwest, clearing out much of the precipitation until we get down into south central Alaska and the far eastern portions of the interior where we will still see some snow. Our old low by the eastern Gulf is starting to push closer towards the Yakutat area, starting to weaken as well, but still going to see quite a bit of precipitation for the Panhandle with rain in the southern locations and snow as we get farther to the north. So look at our temperatures for our lows on Wednesday morning. Southern locations of the Panhandle going to see primarily into the 30s and dropping down to the 20s for central locations and into the teens as we get to the northern Lynn Canal areas. The Yakutat down to 25 degrees. For South Central Alaska, areas near the Gulf are going to be in the 30s. Kodiak, 35 degrees. Other locations around South Central are going to drop into the 20s. And as we do expect this time of year, Copper River Basin is going to be quite a bit colder, getting down to 1 degree. Moving up into the interior single digits for southern locations, below zero as we get farther to the north into the minus teens, as we get up by the Bettles area, and then minus 20s through the Brooks Range. Up along the Arctic coastline, minus 30s into the far eastern locations, minus 20s as we move farther to the west. Down in the Kotzebue Sound area, minus teens expected. Southern part of the Seward Peninsula into the below zero numbers, but getting, staying above zero for the southern portions of Northern Sound. Southwest Alaska and the YK Delta area in the teens, near 30 for Bristol Bay, and in the lower to mid 30s for the Aleutian Islands and Alaska Peninsula, 28 degrees for St. Paul. Wednesday afternoon highs starting off in the Panhandle area, getting up into the 40s in southern locations, and into the 30s for the more northern locations, coldest up in the Northern Lynn Canal area. For South Central Alaska, mid 30s for areas near the Gulf. In the lower 30s, as we get to more interior locations, and in the 20s, as we get to the far, the more northern locations like Talkeetna and Glen Allen. Up in the interior, in the 20s for southern locations, single digits for much of the central interior, so you get farther to the north, staying below zero for those highs. And then along the Arctic coastline, negative teens out west, negative 20s out east. Right around minus 10 for the Kotzebue Sound area, and primarily in the single digits for the Norton Sound, a little bit colder by Savunga only getting up to minus four degrees there. Down in the YK Delta area in the teens primarily and then getting up into the 30s for the Bristol Bay area. For the Alaska Peninsula near 40 degrees and upper 30s for the Aleutian Islands. Thursday morning lows staying in the southeastern portions of the state into the 30s for most locations. Link Canal area is going to be a little bit colder in the 20s there. For South Central Alaska in the 20s for most locations, a little bit warmer by Kodiak Island, 32 degrees for Kodiak City, and then 10 degrees for that morning low as we get into the Glen Allen area. Up in the interior, primarily all below zero, some of the far southern locations might stay uh, below, above zero. 
but getting into the minus 20s as we get closer towards the Brooks range, Ambler as well, and then along the Arctic coastline, minus 20s out west, minus 30s out east, near minus 20 for the Cotsby Sound area, near minus 10 for the Normal Sound area, YK Delta area right around zero, into the 20s for the Bristol Bay area, and then the Aleutian Islands and Alaska Peninsula, lower to mid 30s are expected, with 26 for St. Paul. Thursday afternoon highs in the Panhandle area into the lower 40s out down south into the 30s as we get to more northern locations. South central Alaska, mid 30s near the water and near 30 as we get up into the interior locations. Interior Alaska gonna get above zero for most locations in the southeastern portions, but as we get closer towards the Brooks Range, staying below zero. Below zero all along the Arctic coastline as well as the west coast. And then getting above zero for the YK Delta area, near 30 for Bristol Bay and near 40 for the Aleutian Islands and Alaska Peninsula. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For aviation, we'll start off with a look at our flying weather on Thursday morning. Out over the Bering Sea and Aleutians, we can see the front coming in from the west, bringing some IFR conditions to the western Aleutian Islands. A little break in conditions until we get out into the eastern portions of the Bering Sea, where we have some more MVFR conditions. And those MVFR conditions are going to extend up through southwest Alaska and into the interior. Out over the Gulf of Alaska, we have a mixture of IFR and MVFR conditions with a lot of those IFR conditions pushing into the North Gulf Coast and Prince William Sound areas. And then primarily VFR conditions down in the Panhandle. However, some of the southern and northern portions are seeing some MVFR conditions. Up along the Arctic coastline, conditions are going to worsen as we get further to the west where we will see some IFR conditions. On Thursday afternoon, those IFR conditions are going to extend out through most of the North Slope area with some of the MVFR conditions extending down through the Brooks Range into the Seward Peninsula. Out of the interior, we have some areas of MVFR extending down into South Central Alaska as well as towards the Bristol Bay area with some isolated areas of IFR. All for the Panhandle area, we're expecting to see widespread IFR conditions Thursday afternoon. And then as we track out over the Bering Sea and Aleutians, we have our area of IFR moving with our frontal system towards the central Aleutians. On Friday morning, that front is going to push further into the Bering Sea, bringing IFR conditions to the Pribilof Islands as well as the eastern Aleutians. Then out over mainland Alaska, starting up north, North Slope is going to see widespread IFR conditions with MVFR conditions extending down through the Norton Sound area. South Central Alaska will be primarily MVFR with some IFR out to the east, and then widespread IFR conditions for the eastern portions of the Gulf of Alaska as well as the Panhandle. Friday afternoon continuing to see IFR conditions throughout the Panhandle, however much of the Gulf of Alaska is starting to clear up with some MVFR out east and some VFR out west. Eastern portions of South Central Alaska will see some MVFR and IFR. The interior portion of the state will be primarily VFR conditions will worsen as we get into the Brooks Range and then IFR conditions along the North Slope. Out over the Bering Sea and Aleutians, we are going to see our front extending IFR conditions through the Pribilof Islands, starting to make their way also into the Alaska Peninsula, and some MVFR conditions behind this boundary. As we look at our passes starting up north at Anaktuvik, MVFR conditions dropping down to marginal conditions in the afternoon. Attigan Pass will start off VFR and then drop down to marginal conditions. Lake Clark and Merrill should both be MVFR throughout the day on Thursday, as well as at Rainy Pass. Windy Pass will start off marginal as well, but then drop down to IFR in the afternoon. Isabel should be MVFR throughout the day, as well as at Mintasta. Tanita Pass will start off marginal, dropping down later into IFR conditions, and Portage should be IFR all day on Thursday. Chilkoot and Light will both start off in VFR in the morning, and then drop down into IFR conditions. For our freezing level, surface freezing line moves to the southern portions of the Bering Sea and rides along the North Gulf Coast and into the Panhandle area. Some warmer air to the south of the Panhandle, around 2,000 feet just to the south of the area, then some more warm air with our other system coming in from the west, bringing 4,000 foot freezing levels around the western Aleutian Islands area. For our icing with the system out west, we're going to see icing above 5,000 feet. And then a lot of icing for the southern portions of the mainland, but between 4 and 9,000 feet over the interior, below 9,000 feet for south central, below 4,000 feet for the Alaska Peninsula, and above 1,000 feet for much of the panhandle. So you look at our jet stream, we can see two portions of the jet, one moving in over the central Aleutian Islands area out of a southwesterly direction 100 knots, and then exiting the Bering Sea out of a northwesterly direction 95 to 105 knots out by the Alaska Peninsula. Another jet streak is up by the northeastern portions of the state with southwesterly winds up to as high as 105 knots. Dropping down to 9,000 feet, we have some stronger winds out by our western Aleutians low with southwesterly winds 60 to 65 knots. Coming northwesterly 35 out by the Alaska Peninsula. 
I wrote much of mainland Alaska. We're seeing primarily somewhat of a north to west flow with 30 knots out over the interior and along the Arctic coastline. And then down in the Panhandle area, south to southwest flow, 50 to 55 knots. At 3,000 feet, still strong winds out over the Panhandle area, starting to switch the direction a little bit, becoming more southeasterly due to the terrain, up to as high as 50 knots there. Along the west coast, northerly winds of 30 knots are expected, northwest winds 35 knots along the Arctic coastline. Strongest winds, however, are going to be with the system out west, with winds out of a south to southwesterly direction by the central Aleutian Islands, getting up to as high as 65 knots. Another area of 65 knots approaching the western Aleutian Islands. For our turbulence with the areas that we did see those stronger winds, we are expecting some areas of turbulence as well. For the central and western Aleutian Islands, that's going to be below 3,000 feet expected. That area is going to continue to expand to the east as we move throughout the day on Thursday below 4,000 feet for the Alaska Peninsula, and finally out over the Panhandle area, especially in the inside waters, below 6,000 feet is expected. Good evening, and thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, joined again by Eric Stevens of GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And Eric, thanks so much for joining us again tonight. Happy to be here, Dave. Thanks, Eric. And uh, we've been talking about the complex uh, uh, gathering of information uh, from satellites looking down on the uh, surface of the planet. And some of those orbits around the planet work for Alaska, and some of them don't. And there's a lot of challenges with those. Uh, how can we get better imagery for the poles and specifically for Alaska? Right. Well, today we're going to talk about a very interesting kind of satellite orbit that mm -hmm. has potential to be real helpful for the high latitudes, okay. especially us here in Alaska, Canadians, mm -hmm. Russians, Norwegians will all be interested in this. Mm -hmm. um, the satellites are not in orbit yet. Mm -hmm. Now the future is, is uncertain, but it's possible, and if this happens, it will be wonderful huh. for Alaska. Okay. It's called the highly elliptical orbit. Oh, that sounds it's good. interesting, <laughs> yeah. And okay. I think first to help our discussion, we should get back to some of Kepler's laws and, and how do okay. satellites work. Sure. Kepler's first law, an orbit of a planet around a sun or a weather satellite around the Earth mm -hmm. is not necessarily a circle, it's an ellipse. Okay. And uh, the highly elliptical orbit mm -hmm. takes advantage of this aspect. We're going to put the Earth in one of the ellipse and then stretch one of the foci of the ellipse okay. and then stretch that ellipse out real far to make it highly elliptical. And the foci is that, that bend part of the, the end of the ellipse. If you're going to stretch out a rubber band, that would be the mm -hmm. center, kind of the stretchy part. The yes. End. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then um, Kepler's second law says that the closer something is to the thing that it's orbiting, mm -hmm. the faster it goes. Okay. We see this in the solar system, that Mercury flies around the sun real right. fast. Um, Jupiter, much slower. Jupiter's further away, it's mm -hmm. slower. Mercury's closer in, it's faster. This happens with weather satellites, too. Mm -hmm. Even uh, satellites like the International Space Station, it's pretty close to the Earth. It goes around the Earth in only 90 minutes. Okay. That thing is moving. Fast. It's only 250 miles away. So. How can we take advantage of these two aspects of Kepler's laws of motion uh -huh. to get better weather surveillance of Alaska? And this highly elliptical orbit is going to be the approach. So we have with us today our friendly planet Earth right. and our simulated um, satellite, the yeah. lid off of this salt it's a shaker like here. Sputnik there. Yeah. Here it is. It's <laughs> shiny, it's metal, it's space worthy. And what we want to be able to do is could you have a satellite hover over over the top of the world, up over Alaska. You mm. can't really do that. Maybe, Geostationary maybe satellites right. have to be over the equator. Okay. So how, how could we almost solve this? And this is, this is the tricky part. Maybe uh, should we uh, tilt the we Earth tilt over? The other, focus we're, on the pole, that's what we're trying to accomplish right. here, right? So okay. here we have the northern side of the planet, mm -hmm. and we're gonna trace out the orbit of a satellite with this salt shaker okay. lid here. Now imagine a highly elliptical orbit, so let's put the Earth in one of the foci of the ellipse, okay. and we'll have an imaginary foci out here. Okay. So the satellite will not go in a circle around the Earth, but will be in this long, strung out ellipse. Okay. So the satellite will go... Kind of like a racetrack. Yes, okay. there you go, like a racetrack. Okay. So it's an oval, elliptical yeah. shape like that. And notice now that when the satellite's over here, mm -hmm. we've got a nice view of the northern hemisphere the around there's down. Alaska, okay. Russia, Canada, mm -hmm. Greenland, all there. So that's um, the ellipse aspect of an orbit, Kepler's okay. first law. The second law saying that when you're further away as a satellite, you go slower. 
And oh, this we can take real okay. advantage of. Huh. Because the way this orbit works, when the satellite goes over Antarctica here, right. it's going to be close to the Earth. Okay. It's going to be moving, whoosh, mm -hmm. goes on by. And then as it comes out here, it will slow down. This oh, increases what is known as the dwell time. The satellite will just hang here looking mm -hmm. for hours at Alaska wow. and the high Arctic. And then eventually it will come around and it will accelerate and whiz around the South Pole and then mm -hmm. come back and hang here for a while because it's further away from the planet. It goes slower. Yeah. It has to. That's the laws of motion. And such like that, repeating. Wow. Now, the, the real important way to make this work is you have to have two satellites. Okay. So that while one is whipping around the pole, you've got the other one out here. And they work as a team. You could then get a series of images of Alaska that can be almost from a quasi, a constant frame of reference. Right. And you can loop them together to make, uh, to make movies. You can take a picture every 10 minutes, say, uh -huh. of Alaska and then loop it, uh, playing it at several frames a second. You, you can see the clouds whiz on by. You know, the Weather Channel, uh, weather broadcasters in the lower 48 especially mm -hmm. can show these movie loops from right. the geostationary satellites. In Alaska, we've never really been able to do that very well, uh -huh. especially in the higher, most northern parts of the state, okay. because those geostationary satellites are of the equator, it's not a good view. And this highly elliptical orbit, whipping mm -hmm. around the South Pole and then dwelling up here, would be a way for us to get that constant frame of reference and do really good weather surveillance over the Arctic, seeing where those storms are, where they're going. Right. Nothing quite like a, a movie loop of the weather in time to really illustrate what's important, what's going on. And compared to what we have right now, we just have small windows or snapshots of what's going on with the mm -hmm. polar orbiters. We don't have that yep. long range view that's looking top down to give us that complete motion picture that helps us understand so much of, of the atmosphere yep. at this There's point. so many different kinds of satellites. Each, each has their advantage. Mm -hmm. Each is important. And the highly elliptical orbit satellite will also fit into that scheme. It, oh. It's a nifty idea to, to solve an Alaskan challenge. That's fantastic. Well, that sounds really exciting. And again, a, kind of a satellite dream of the future to come. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Thanks for joining us today, Eric. We really appreciate the information. And if you'd like to learn more about what Eric does at GINA, the University of Alaska Fairbanks, we invite you to visit the web address that you see on your screen there. Uh, for Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back for the marine section. We'll start off with our marines down in southeast Alaska on Thursday. Stronger winds out in the Gulf water, storm force winds 50 knots out of a south southeasterly direction, diminishing and becoming more east and eventually northerly as we get farther to the north in the northern portions of the Gulf, 20 to 30 knots expected. Seas up to as high as 30 feet in the eastern portions of the Gulf of Alaska. In the inside waters, we do have southeast winds 40 knots in southern locations, becoming north 35 in central areas, and then up in Lynn Canal, northerly winds 20 knots expected. On Friday, winds calming down quite a bit. In the inner channels, we do have southerly winds 20 knots in all locations, and then westerly flow out over the Gulf waters, 25 to 35 knots strongest west of Gustavus. For south central Alaska on Thursday, in the northern portions of the Gulf, North to east winds, 20 knots expected, dropping down to 15 knots south of Seward, and then by the Barren Islands, northwest winds, 30 knots. In Cook Inlet, northerly winds, 10 to 20 knots, and in Prince William Sound, easterly winds, 15 knots. For Friday, out over the Gulf waters, northwest winds, 25 to 30 knots in northern locations, 40 knots near the Barren Islands, west 45 west of the Barren Islands. Cook Inlet, northerly winds, 10 to 20 knots strongest in the south, and then in Prince William Sound, northwesterly winds 25 knots expected. For Thursday in the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island area, all northwesterly directions, 25 knots near Kodiak Island, 25 knots also on the Bering side, and then 30 knots on the Pacific side. For Friday out by Kodiak Island, westerly winds 25 to 30 knots expected, seas up to as high as 13 feet highest east of the island. On the Bering side, um, Northeast to east winds, 25 to 30 knots, and then on the Pacific side by Sand Point, southeasterly winds, 25 knots expected. For Thursday for the Aleutian Islands, eastern Aleutians, northwest winds, 20 to 25 knots, becoming south to southeast, 25 to 35 knots for the central Aleutians, and then by the western Aleutians, southeast, 40 knots expected. On Friday, out by the western Aleutian, southerly winds, 30 knots, dropping down to 20 knots as we progress to the east, becoming westerly by the central Aleutian Islands, 15 to 20 knots, and eastern Aleutian, southerly winds, 30 knots expected. Along the west coast, all northerly winds, 20 to 25 knots, strongest south of Nunavik Island. 
By St. Matthew Island, easterly winds 25 knots, and by the Pribilof Islands, northwesterly winds 15 knots expected. On Friday, in the Norton Sound area, northerly winds 10 knots, picking up to 15 knots by St. Lawrence Island. By Nunavik Island, northeasterly winds 25 to 30 knots. By St. Matthew Island, easterly winds 40 knots expected, seas up to as high as 19 feet highest in the southwestern areas of the island. And then for the Purple Off Islands, easterly winds 35 knots expected. For the Arctic coast, west to southwest winds 20 knots and becoming uh, more northerly as we get closer towards the Bering Strait area, it's still 20 knots, however. On Friday along the Arctic coastline, westerly winds 15 to 20 knots, becoming more northerly again as we approach the Bering Strait area, remaining at 15 knots. Recap of tonight's weather, we do have quite a bit of activity, especially with our system coming up towards the eastern portions of the Gulf of Alaska. Strong low there, going to bring in some stronger winds to the area. We do have a high wind watch out for the Sitka area that will take effect 6 a.m. on Thursday through 3 p.m. We also have high wind warnings for the Prince of Wales Island area, as well as southern inner water or inner channels, including Ketchikan's area. That's going to be in effect 3 a.m. through noon. We also have some wind chill advisories up along the Arctic coastline that are going to start uh, later tonight and then last until uh, noon on Thursday for the western locations and then on noon on Friday for the eastern locations. Could get as low as uh, minus 65 for those wind chills in the eastern locations. Otherwise, we do have a frontal system moving by the western Aleutians, bringing a rain and snow mixed to the islands. Snow for the eastern Bering and eastern Aleutians, as well as southwest Alaska, south central Alaska, and into the interior. And in the panhandle itself, we do have some snow up north and more rain as we get to southern locations. For Thursday, rain in the south for the Panhandle area, as well as snow farther to the north. Snow continuing along the North Gulf Coast through South Central Alaska, the Bristol Bay area, and eastern portions of the interior. Up along the Arctic coastline, we have snow moving in over the northwest coast. And then out by the western Aleutians front, pushing through, going to bring some snow to the Bering Sea, as well as a mix of rain and snow to the Aleutians. Finally, on Friday, that low is going to move out by the eastern Aleutian Islands with some snow out ahead of it and a mix of rain and snow for the eastern Aleutian Islands. For the western Aleutians, we have some snow showers expected. And then for mainland Alaska, high pressure moving in, going to push off most of the precipitation with the exception of eastern portions of south central and the far eastern portions of the interior. Down in the Panhandle area, however, our low is diminishing but still bringing quite a bit of precipitation to the area with some rain farther to the south and snow up north. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.